when we shall see you face to face. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. But more. 
or that because he was not one of your followers, we try to stop him. Instead, they say, he was not one of us. He was not, the words were, following us. And what they object to, of course, is that this unknown man is not one of their group. And therefore, he cannot possibly be a full disciple of our Lord. In their eyes, they have become the standard by which discipleship is measured and the call of Christ is effectively sidelined. They have concentrated on what the man is not and not the fact that he successfully exercises that exorcism in Christ's name. And this is despite the fact, of course, that only a little earlier in the same chapter, it is the disciples themselves who were unable to exercise a demon from a young boy. So we have, do we not, that irony that if we apply the disciples' exclusionary approach to themselves, then it is they who deserve to be excluded and not this man. Unlike the unknown man, they were not able to exercise in that Christ's name. And by setting then their own standards, of course, they can blissfully ignore their own faults and feel righteous. There is, however, another catch, and that is by trying to exclude this exorcist, they show their misunderstandings of our Lord's message. And perhaps they do merit, therefore, exclusion of the rule. But that is not something that is peculiar to only that group of disciples. It can happen in our own Christian communities too, or in any group situation, and we should always be aware of it. Remembering that in as much as we try to exclude others unfairly from Christ, we could be excluding ourselves. Now thankfully, of course, this is not the last word, although many of us can easily fall into that temptation to be exclusionary. Our God is certainly not. And the Christian Gospel challenges and judges any attempt to divide people into a them and us situation. It is, after all, a gospel of reconciliation, of harmony, and of justice. Reconciliation not only between man and God, but between every person within a community of love where all barriers need to be broken down. And so today's Gospel, I would suggest to you, confronts any presumption that we may have to any form of superiority, challenging us to find the good qualities in other people rather than the negative. And that may mean for all of us, and I include myself in this too, to give up any feelings of self-righteousness and superiority which we all love so very dearly. And it is a serious business, as that Gospel was highlighting, because those feelings and the behaviours that they lead to undermine the faith Though some of the forms, of course, of exclusion may be subtle or otherwise. And Jesus is making the point incredibly strongly in that gospel passage of the words that he's using. But anyone who is an obstacle to 
bring down one of those little ones who have faith would be better to be thrown into the sea with a great millstone around his neck. There's the war. How do you read it? Do you take it as a warning? It is a warning, of course, not to harm little ones. Certainly the children that we heard of in last week's Gospel. But it is also far more than that. You see, that warning may be addressed to you and to me. But it's also possible that it is we who are the little ones. In need of God's protection, of course, and God's love. Now we had a Coal Streams Guard concert here on Friday. And there was a sergeant major here who must have been about six foot ten tall. <laughs> and I have to say, those of us who were near to him felt very little indeed. But we are not talking of, of course, physical presence. But uh, seeing ourselves as little ones in the eyes of God and of needing God's love and protection. The disciples. I would suggest didn't see themselves like that, though their behaviour showed them to be very little indeed. They misjudged that exorcism, and they misjudged themselves. Personally, I think we are all little ones to a greater or lesser degree, and the less we see it, I would suggest the more little we are. And this is a strong warning today, and it remains a warning for us, but also it gives us great comfort too, thankfully. Comfort because it means that our salvation and well-being are to be protected because we little ones matter hugely to Almighty God. We are therefore called to be protectors, whilst also recognising that we ourselves need protection too. And the ever so simple categories that we so often construct of them and us break down before our own weaknesses and the love and mercy of God as shown through Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
loving Lord, we are called to serve others. Help us to recognise God's Spirit working in the people around us. And here are our prayers that we bring before you. Help us to remember the importance of prayer. And may we never be too busy to pray. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. As the price of gas rockets and we face fuel and food shortages, we pray that the government and suppliers can work together to create a sustainable solution. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those people who are homeless, with no shelter, no place to lay their heads. Enable us all to provide them with shelter, security, and hope to rebuild their lives. And we pray for Claire Hall and all her colleagues as they wrestle with so many problems. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are feeling afraid and worried about their safety, wherever they are in the world. And let us pray for those suffering racism or any kind of social injustice. May we all act to defend integrity, peace and equity for all and remind us we are all God's children. Lord, in your mercy. As the winter season approaches, we pray for all people working in health care. May the Holy Spirit bless and protect our NHS workers, renew their energy, and restore their well-being. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for those who will enter the Christian Church this day in this minister through the sacrament of baptism. By name, we pray for Tane Jarrell and Manehache Odin. Albie William Nunn, and Violet Shirley Alice Markey. And we pray for their families and all their loved ones. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who have asked for our prayers. My name, Isabel Scaife, Isabel Pachico, Irene, Angela, Sheila, Steve, Christopher. Gemma Lewis, Emily, Alan, Jean, Ben, and Sharon. Lord, we pray for your healing touch in all their lives. Lord, in your mercy. We now pray for all those whose anniversaries fall at this time. Alice Hemmings, Eddie Fern, and Ernest Christopher Carver. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Heavenly King, guide us to witness seeing you in all we do as we help to bring your spirit into the world. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Let us then pursue all that makes for peace. 
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Great is the mystery of faith. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection. 
resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. George, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Amen. Amen. 